family of the Hayes around the world. Good evening also to our viewers on a different platform and welcome to our evening Wednesday service. And I want you, beloved, to get ready because I'm so excited once again. I'm experiencing what the Bible says. I'm joyful when I'm told, let us go to the house of God. So without any further delay, beloved, I'm going to invite us to pray. Let us pray and dedicate this moment into the Lord's hands and asking him and him alone to guide us during this time. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this evening. And we pray that you will continue, Lord, speaking to us. You will continue, Father, revealing yourself to us through the knowledge of your word. Help us, O oh Lord, to be fed with your word. Because we know men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of your mouth. We dedicate this moment once again to your control. And we pray that your kingdom come, your will be done. During this time of the sharing of the word, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, I'm going to request us to get our Bible ready. And we are going to read in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 2, we shall read from verse number 23 to 24, as well as chapter 3. Where we will read also two verses, verse number 9, as well as verse number 10. Exodus chapter 2, verse number 23. And as for tonight, I will be using the English Standard Version. I'm going to read. The Bible says, during those, during those many days, the king of Egypt died. And the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and they cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God. And God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, 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 I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Beloved, when I read this passage, I understand what we started talking about since last Sunday. Last Sunday, beloved, we spoke about in the middle of a crisis, God is calling you. And we said that it is possible, no matter the crisis in which you find yourself, for God to call you. You can hear the voice of God even when you are in a crisis. And it all depends on the choice you make, either to hear the voice of God and to respond positively, or to behave like Adam. By the time Adam heard the voice of God, the Bible shows us that Adam hid himself. It doesn't matter. No matter the crisis in which you find yourself, you can still hear the voice of God. Why? Because God calls people whenever there is a crisis. And he listened to what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 7, as well as verse 15. Today, if you will hear the voice of God, do not harden your heart. So it is true that God is calling you. It is true that God is calling me. We also say, beloved, that it is very important for us to respond positively by saying, here I am. 
like with the case of the young man uh, uh, Samuel in the temple in chapter 3 when God called to Samuel Samuel responded by saying here I am and in the book of Exodus chapter 3 we can see the same reaction the same also answer from Moses Moses responded by saying here I am Beloved, here I am means I have heard your voice and I am ready to receive from you instructions. Here I am means I am listening. You can speak. Speak to me. I'm ready to listen to what you are saying. Here I am reveals a condition of readiness of someone in order for that person for that brother, for that sister, to do the will of God. So beloved in Christ, there is a good question which I will propose us today. And I strongly believe, beloved, that this question will help us to move forward with our message tonight. And the question is simple. For what good reason God is calling you? Because we say it that God is calling you. Someone will ask, for what reason? Why is God calling you? Why is God calling me? Is there any reason why God can call somebody in the middle of a crisis? Is there a reason why I can tell you tonight that God is calling you? Yes, beloved. There is a good reason why God is calling somebody. Why God is calling you. And the reason is simple. It's because God is calling you in order to send you. So the title of our message tonight is, In the middle of a crisis, God is sending you. Not only that God is calling you in the middle of crisis, but he's calling you so that you will respond positively for him to send you. Tonight we are talking about in the middle of a crisis, God is sending you. God does not call us in order for us just to hear his voice. God is not calling us just for us to be able to identify his voice, but God is calling us so that we can become his messengers. God is calling us so that we can become tools through which not only he will do wonders, but the tools through which God will speak to his people. God is calling us individually so that we can become his tools and therefore God is sending us. Beloved, once we hear the calling of God, we need to accept to become messengers of God. If we call ourselves servant of God, in another way we are saying we are his messengers. And most of the time, God is sending us in the middle of a crisis. Why? Because we've got a message of hope. Why? Because we've got a message that can change lives. Why? Because we've got a message that can bring a solution. That's the reason why tonight I'm telling you, in the middle of a crisis, God is sending you. And beloved, we cannot expect to be sent without receiving from him the right message. Every person that God has called will give him a specific message for the needs of his people. So the relationship that we have between us and God matters the most in order to do the will of God. Not only our relationship with God, but also, I can say, the revelation of God matters the most when it comes to the message of God that we need to send out as messengers. Beloved, if I'm saying God is sending you, 
It means there are places where God would love to go. There are places where God would love to say things. There are places where God would love to perform wonders, to do things, to perform miracles. And therefore, God will call somebody. And to that person, God will give a message. And then God will send out that person. And you are the person that God is sending because you heard the calling from God. Beloved, in order for us to understand that God is sending us, I'm going to request us to consider the story of the young man Jonah. If you read in the book of Jonah, Jonah chapter 1, verse number 1 as well as verse number 2, the Bible says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for they evil has come up before me. Beloved, this is a clear indication, not only that God is calling us, but God is also sending us. And if we are saying we are currently in a crisis, God is calling us to send us in the middle of any crisis. It is amazing, beloved, when we study the story of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning of his ministry, he will start first by calling his disciples. It only when you receive a calling, then you can be sent. If we read it in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 4, from verse 18 to 22, the Bible says, While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. The Bible says, Immediately they left the net and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee their father, mending their net. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Beloved, we can see that the Lord Jesus Christ, from the beginning of his ministry, he is busy calling. And the same applies with us today. God is calling men and women. God is calling young and old. God is calling no matter the race you are. God is calling no matter your gender, no matter your age, no matter your social, I can say, ranking. God is calling you. And the good reason why he's calling you is because he wants to send you. God is sending you after you have received his call. I want us quickly, beloved, to consider what now the Lord Jesus Christ will do before departing from his disciples, before leaving the earth. The Lord Jesus Christ now will send out the same disciples whom he called from the very beginning. In the book of Matthew still, chapter 28, from verses 16 to 20, the Bible says the following, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of age.
glory be to the Lord. We can see the same Lord who called them in the beginning. He is the same Lord who is sending them before he depart. So tonight I have come to tell you, beloved, in the middle of a crisis, God is sending you as his messenger. And the one who is sending you, the Bible says that he has all authority. Himself says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Not only that he is sending you, but he is even guaranteeing you and me his presence. Because he continues by saying, I am with you always to the end of age. What a great news, beloved. The same person who calls us is the same person who is sending us. And not only that he is sending us, but he is giving us the guarantee that he is with us. In another way, when we are going to be speaking, it is not going to be our own way, but it will be his way. Because he is with us, and whatever we shall do shall not be our works, but it will be his works. Why? Because we are just tools that he's going to use if we accept to hear his calling and accept his sending out. So beloved in the Lord, not only that the Lord God has called us to follow him, he is also sending us into the world in order for us to do the will of God. Not only that he is calling us, but we have to be able to receive the revelation of his weight so that we can be able to send out his message. Beloved, if we claim that we have a calling from God, it means we must be ready to be sent out by God himself. Beloved, the true servant of the highest God, they do not go where they want to go for themselves. But if you call yourself a servant, if you call yourself a child of God, if you call yourself that you are a saint of God, it means you must be able to go where God sent you to go. A servant does not choose to do what he or she wants, but a good servant will be ready to do the will of his master. So we cannot receive the calling from God and decide to go wherever we want to go on our own. We should be able to receive the guidance, the direction from our master. Then we do what he says we have to do. Beloved, in order for us to respond positively to the calling and the sending that we receive from God, we should have a proper relationship with the living God. Many people do not do what God is expecting them to do, simply because they are ignorant of the person of God who is calling them. And the Bible shows us in the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6, that my people are destroyed by lack of knowledge. So because, the Bible says, because you have rejected knowledge, I have rejected you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. That's what the Bible says. So not knowing very well the person of God who is sending us will limit even our gift and the talent. If we consider the story of the young man, Gideon, in the book of Judges, chapter 6, because of ignorance, Gideon was now arguing with the angel of the Lord. Why? Because he did not know the God who, who appeared to him in the form of an angel, and he ignored even his own talent. Because the Bible shows us that the angel of the Lord called him a mighty man of valor. It was a revelation for him. So knowing God, having a personal relationship with him will also give us the ability to discover gift and talent that God has given us. 
And if we discover the person of God who is sending us, much shall we achieve with God. And I want us to consider, beloved, the story of the young man, David. David knew the person of God. That's the reason why David could achieve more, even in the bush, with no one witnessing. David could kill the lion and the bear. Why? Because of the personal relationship, because of the knowledge he had about God. And he could achieve more. And later on, David will become a giant killer. Not because he was having big muscles. Not because he used a special weapon. But because of the knowledge of God that David had. And beloved, for us to understand what I'm talking about, I want us to read in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. Verse number 34 to 37. The Bible says the following. I'm talking about David. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. David is giving a testimony of his life. He's giving a testimony of his own experience with God in the bush. Your servant used, I mean, David said, to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when they came a lion or a bear and he took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. I'm reading in the English uh, uh, standard version. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. And David had by saying, for he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Beloved, when we go out today, we are not going on our own, but the Lord God is with us. And the Bible says, greater is the one who is in us than he who is in the world. I have come to tell you tonight, my brother, my sister, no matter the current crisis in which we find ourselves, not only that God is calling you, but God is also sending you. The same way JC, the father of David, sent David to go and find out how his brother were doing during a time of a crisis because the country was facing a war. The same God is calling you and is sending you out. But the good news is you are not alone. God is with you and God is sending you. Beloved, my prayer and the desire of my heart is that God will make of each and every one of us a messenger, a saint one, someone carrying a message from God, someone carrying the supernatural ability because of the presence of God in his life, someone filled with the Holy Spirit, able to go out and to become a living tool that God will use in order to solve any crisis in which his people are finding themselves. To Moses, the, the Bible says the following in Exodus chapter 3, verse number 10. Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. First you come, second you will be sent. And tonight I have come to tell you that God is sending you out today. In the middle of a crisis, God is sending you. 
Beloved, if we understand chapter 3 of the book of Exodus, especially the verse number 7 and verse number 8, these two verses paint the picture of the crisis in which the children of Israel were living in. The Bible says, the Lord said, then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know the sufferings or their sufferings and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Beloved, when you read these two verses, you will understand that this is an image of a social economic crisis. But glory be to the Lord, because God has decided to call Moses. And not only that, God now is sending Moses out. Beloved, God is sending you to speak on behalf of not only your family, not only yourself, not only your community, not only your country, but God is sending you in order for you to speak on behalf of God. And the message of God, it is a message of hope. It is a message of deliverance. And I pray that you will become like Esther, whom God used, whom God called, in order to save his people who were about to be killed. The story of Esther can be read in the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 15 to 17. Not only that God called Esther to become the queen, but Esther will receive now a mission, an assignment, which was to save his people from destruction. Beloved, if I'm saying that God is sending you because God is sending you indeed to become a source of blessing to others, Think about our father of faith, Abraham, in the book of Genesis chapter 12. By the time he received the calling from God, God will send him even to a country, to a land that he did not know. God, by accepting the calling of God, God will make of Abraham a source of blessing. And if such is the case, God is sending you so that you will become a source of blessing. In this time of crisis, beloved, we should avail ourselves to be of those God will call. And not only God will call, but to be of those that God will also send. Because it is possible once you receive the calling from God and you accept the mission that is given you, you will become a reference of God. I love what God says. When it comes to the calling of Moses, God will now present himself to Moses by using the reference's names and say, I am the God of your fathers. Abraham has become a reference. Isaac has become a reference. Jacob has become a reference. And if tonight you can accept the calling of God, and if tonight you can go out and do what God has called you to do, you will become also a reference of God. God enjoys it to be called by the names of certain people whom he used himself, through whom he did wonders, and he is using them now as a reference. And you too, beloved, you can become a reference of God in the middle of any crisis you find yourself. God is sending you. Because you heard his voice. Because you responded positively to his calling. 
is now sending you out as a messenger. Is now sending you. Why? Because in you, 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 you are an investment. God has placed certain abilities, certain values, certain a talent and gift that are needed in the middle of a crisis. Beloved, I gave us the example of soldiers. In any country, soldiers are always called when the integrity, when the security of a country is now at stake. If there is instability, if the enemy is coming against a kingdom, against a country, soldiers will be called to defend the integrity of the country, of the kingdom. And you and I belong to the kingdom of God. In the middle of the current crisis, God is calling us and God is sending us out. God is sending us as his tools in order for him to act through us in order for him to reach out to other people through our ministries, through our gift and talent. Beloved, there are things that God achieved with Abraham by the time he called him and he sent him out. There are things that God achieved with David by the time he called him and he acted through him. There are things that God performed with the young man Samuel. After calling him, God used him to be a reference. And the same applies for you and me tonight. God, not only that is calling us, but is also sending us. Because God has things that he can achieve. And he wants us to become sources, tools through which he will reach out to his people. God would love to accomplish things through you. Because he is the same God, yesterday, today, forever. Beloved, I just wanted to encourage us. Since we are in the year of mission, it is very important for us to understand as Christians, not only we have received the calling to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord, but we do have the responsibility. As we have seen it in the book of Matthew chapter 28, from verse 18 to 20, Jesus Christ now sent out his disciples by saying, Go and make disciples. You and I, beloved, need to respond positively to the sending of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to make of all the nations disciples of Christ. Irrespective of where we are, irrespective of our social, uh, or can you say, social rankings, irrespective of our profession, we can still hear the voice of God and we can still do what God has called us to do. So beloved in the Lord, this is the message for tonight. God is sending you in the middle of crisis. May God bless you. Thank you.